I can't believe it. I can't believe it that they're gonna left like that. A pile of rocks. They think that we're gonna be violent with that. They think that we're gonna be violent. That's exactly what I want to say. Exactly. That's it, brothers. Yeah, Share the truth. That's, that's bad. That's really fucking bad. That's yeah, like giving. Right. to make some noise now i get it i saw some comments saying that you want to go from nine to five and you want to turn your horns off and you want to you know be respectful and play the optics war and you've done you've done all the math man i get it i get we've done everything every piece of garbage has been picked up statistically there is no crime and when i mean statistically if you have some drunk guy acting you know silly on one street quickly gets you know talked to and then the patriots take him back to his car maybe there was some incident of mischief i've heard reports of antifa throwing rocks at trucks tagging stuff they're the ones committing the crime but other than that this has been the most well-behaved revolution on earth and now the big complaint is can you get them to only blow their horns between nine and five i'm sorry what has complying got you guys so far what is just little by little oh just do this yeah just just don't beat your horns between nine and five that's all we're gonna ask then wear two masks. Then just go right back to square one. How about you put your blame right where it belongs, right in the eye of Sauron, and that's who we handle this with. And every mandate. We're not allowed to exist in society. I'm not allowed to go to a movie. I'm not allowed to go to a restaurant. I'm not allowed to leave the country. You can't even leave. You can't travel on planes. You can't do anything that Trudeau can get his fingers on to discriminate against us in society. Meanwhile, he'll blame us for side effects of his guinea pigs. It's an insane world, and you've complied long enough, guys. End the madness in the horn stop. But I am in no place to go tell these guys, oh, excuse me, can you turn your horn off? Can you get used to complying again? We want freedom. We're not asking for anything unreasonable, and we're doing it on your behalf. The least you can do is turn off your televisions and stop letting their horrible objections to this revolution and their horrible false flags and whatever else they bring. I'm sorry about the noise complaints. Now, are you sorry about banishing me from society and treating me like I'm some sort of leper because I want to keep my immune system intact? Sorry, guys. The horns are staying. Stuff it up your ass, anyone that has a problem with loud noises. We have a problem being banished from society. One. It's Friday, February 4th, and I'm speaking to you from the hotel at the center of the Truckers Freedom Convoy in downtown Ottawa. Over the past year, the federal government in Canada, under Prime Minister Trudeau, has taken away Canadians' charter rights, constitutional rights to travel freely, has taken away truckers' rights to travel, their mobility rights, their ability to make a living under the Constitution for those who've chosen to be unvaccinated. This afternoon, the chief of the city police for, Cap for Ottawa made announcements that are disturbing and should trouble Canadians and those around the world who support this trucker protest for freedom. The police chief essentially announced an assault on the protesters. He announced that very specific measures that we normally only see instituted by oppressive regimes around the world would be initiated. He effectively announced that he is going to be taking away Canadians charter right of peaceful assembly and freedom of expression. We are being censored. Please get this out to the world. We have increased ability to identify and target protesters and supporters of protesters who are funding and enabling unlawful and harmful activity by the protesters themselves. Investigative evidence gathering teams are collecting financial, digital, vehicle registration, driver identification, 
insurance status, and other related evidence that will be used in prosecutions. The hatred, the violence, the illegal acts at Ottawa residences and businesses have endured over the last week is unacceptable in any circumstance. The Ottawa Police Service and the City of Ottawa are bringing significantly greater resources to restore order, hold offenders to account, and protect our neighbourhoods. The current demonstration in the parliamentary precinct red zone remains unresolved despite significant successes in reducing the number of trucks and demonstrators while preventing riots, injuries or deaths. We take no solace in these operational successes to date. Our goal is to end the demonstration. The demonstrators in the red zone area remain highly organized, well funded, extremely committed to resisting all attempts to end the demonstration safely. This remains as it was from the beginning, an increasingly volatile and increasingly dangerous demonstration. It's Tamara Leach here um, from beautiful downtown Ottawa on this lovely Friday afternoon. Uh, we are here today to give you an update on the situation here with GoFundMe, as well as how you can continue to help the truckers that we have on the ground here. So as you know, GoFundMe has only released a million of the over $10 million that you have donated thus far, and they've frozen uh, the rest of it for now. Um, I wanted to get you some accurate information on how you can support the truckers that are on the ground here at the moment. Uh, we've decided to team up with an organization called Give, Send, Go, and which is going to enable us to get donations into the hands of the truckers much, much quicker while everybody gets the rest of the stuff sorted out. So it's going to be Give, Send, Go. It is Freedom Convoy 2022. Uh, that you can check out their site. There'll be links posted here shortly once we have all this information up. Our, and uh, yeah, so please, if you can donate uh, and help us keep these truckers going, you know, we plan to be here for the long haul as long as it takes to ensure that your rights and freedoms are restored. And obviously from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you very much and we will continue to bring you updates as we have all of that information. So thank you very much. I think I'm on a roll here, guys. I think I'm getting getting used to using this app. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know, did you know that GoFundMe, if you do not get your refund, is going to keep your money and donate it to the charity of their choice? I don't think that's right. Do you? You guys donated this for the truckers. It should go to the truckers. Please get on there and demand your refund. And I am going to strongly recommend that you never use them again. Thanks. I can't believe it. I can't believe it that they're gonna left like that. A pile of rocks. They think that we're gonna be violent with that. They think that we're gonna be violent. That's exactly, what I want to say. exactly. That's it, brothers. That's Share the truth. That's, that's bad. That's really fucking bad. That's okay, like giving. said that they were not going to enforce it today they wanted them to start enforcing it today they said no but at midnight tonight anybody that's bringing in jerry cans uh propane tanks fuel of any kind is assisting in illegal activity the fuel will be seized and you will be charged diesel included diesel included thank you What's that, sir? Fill up all the cars now? Is fill up all the cars today. <laughs> if you need to get fuel, get your fuel in today.
something on uh, Facebook I'm going to read it to you it says do not use the GoFundMe refund form issue a chargeback or open a dispute with your bank this way GoFundMe will have to pay 15 US dollars or more for each chargeback yeah. request plus the refund value that's how all banks work and then it says please share this as much as possible if we're successful GoFundMe will regret regret doing this because they'll lose tons of money so fun. <laughs>
as we do this maybe there's people that can't go to dc that will do that if you're in a car if you're in an rv doesn't matter what you're in it has motors and wheels okay jump in if you can't go the whole way fine jump in for a little while i'm going to suggest that if you're going to be a part of it you go get yourself a cb because they may try and cut phone service out they may try and make it you know whatever cbs aren't really interfered with you can get handheld ones are not that expensive it's a way to stay in communication Wow! The military basically just told the liberals to go fuck themselves. They're not getting involved in arresting everybody in the convoy and moving people. Hi everybody, um, some of you have read the good news that I was uh, sent out of the isolation facility. We thought this meant I was allowed to return to the Olympic Village and will be treated maximum as a close contact. Um, on the way to the village, uh, we did not turn to the village, but the ambulance went to another facility where I am now. <laughs> um, I am supposed, my NOC got surprised by this decision as well. I am supposed to stay here for um, another seven days with two PCRs a day and no contact with anybody else. I am allowed to slide alone. I am, we are not even sure I will ever be allowed to return to the village. And obviously this is very hard for me. So I ask you all to give me some time to consider my next steps because I'm not sure I can handle 14 more days and the Olympic competition while being in this isolation. Thank you. Everybody shut up! Pay attention. This is not an excuse for any of you freshmen and sophomores to disrespect your teachers. If I hear of anybody disrespecting teachers or staff tomorrow, that makes us look bad. 
We want this to be a peaceful, respectful movement. We are just trying to gain back our rights as citizens. We do not care about the teachers in the end are just doing their jobs. It doesn't come from them. It comes from the state. Now, what we're hoping is that they kick us out. This sounds bad, but we're hoping that they kick us out because they have to report that tendence to the state. And if the state sees a day where a hundred or I don't even know how many kids are here are absent, they're going to start asking questions. Our hope is, is we can get this statewide. Now I might get in trouble for this, but the plan still stands for Wednesday for tomorrow. I mean, everybody is going to meet at the back row of the senior parking lot. And we're all walking into the school with no mask on. You can get me in trouble. They can suspend me. I don't care. We're done with this. And obviously all of you are too. Shut up. Shut up. Obviously all you are are done with the mask too. Now again, we're doing this peacefully and respectfully. If a, st if a staff member asks you to put a mask on, you say no thank you and keep walking. And if they kick you out, then go home. And if people need, ri need rides home, then some of the seniors, I'm sure we can start giving people rides home. That's about it. <laughs>
Thank you, you too. It's been awful friendly now that he knows she's being broadcasted. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, guys, I cannot find the Tim Hortons. I'm going back up there to the convoy. But there's your budget truck. There's the budget truck we've been telling you about. Remember the false flag we were discussing in the morning? When the fuck do you see cops driving around in budget trucks acting all sketchy with special constable agent uniforms carrying really weird things in really weird ways? That's not normal. As somebody that has been down here and watched Hells Angels own clubs being raided and all kinds of stuff, I can tell you what we just watched there, completely abnormal for any circumstance involving police down here. Like this building, what the hell? The Bank of Montreal, man, like they're sneaking shit in the back door of the Bank of Montreal, it's not a hotel. It's the Bank of Montreal? What would they possibly be sneaking in there? Something's weird going on, man. What's all the buckets? What's that? It's in the buckets. Stop. Can I help you? Well, I'm just exercising my Second Amendment rights. It's awesome. It's a good yeah. What is that? What's that? What is that, sir? You tell me. Corrosive substance. Toxic information. Toxic explosive corrosive substance. In my hotel. If you support the truckers in Ottawa in any capacity, I'm going to assume that you are a fucking Nazi. And that you support the fact that they assaulted workers at a fucking soup kitchen. I'm going to assume that you support them defacing Terry po Fox's uh, statue and pissing on a fucking war memorial. I'm going to assume you don't respect a single fucking person who isn't perfectly fit into your stupid little cis het patriarchal white supremacist bullshit i'm going to assume that you don't care whether disabled people live or die and i'm gonna go ahead and say that i don't think you care if anybody who isn't you lives or dies because people are going to die because of this the roads are blocked off we are facing i'm not in ottawa but canada like it's fucking cold People are going to freeze. People are being assaulted. People are being screamed at. They're, they're, there is a never ending wall of sound surrounding Ottawa currently. That is psychological warfare. People are going to get hurt. People are going to lose their fucking minds in that situation. So if you support the truckers, I hope you support the people of Ottawa when they lose their shit and fucking retaliate. When they fight back against the literal Nazis holding them hostage currently. If you support the truckers, you're not fucking welcome here. Get fucked. We are here out of love for our families, our communities, and our nation. These past two years, the COVID mandates have divided us. This protest be began because of the federal government's restrictions on trucker freedoms. Our movement has grown in Canada and across the world because common people are tired of the mandates and restrictions in their lives that now seem to be doing more harm than good. As of today, Sweden, Denmark, UK, Norway, Finland, Ireland and Switzerland have removed all COVID mandates and restrictions. We are therefore calling on all levels of government in Canada to end all COVID mandates and restrictions. We will continue our protest until we see a clear plan for their elimination. Premier Scott Moe of Saskatchewan has taken leadership in Canada in ending restrictions and mandates in that province. Hopefully, these words will turn into long-lasting action. So far, no one from the federal, federal, provincial or municipal government has spoken directly with us. 
Instead, they are using you, the media, to portray us as racists, misogynists, and even terrorists. As a woman with Métis heritage, a mother and a grandmother, I am offended. The reality is that members of this freedom movement are average, peace-loving, and law-abiding citizens from all walks of life who are fed up with being disrespected and bullied by our government. Let me assure the people of Ottawa that we have no intent to stay one day longer than necessary. Our departure will be based on the Prime Minister doing what is right, ending all mandates and restrictions on our freedoms. We also want to thank the thousands of people who have so generously donated to this protest to GoFundMe. Over the last three days, our accountants and lawyers have been working hard to deal with the legal details. This morning, our lawyers sent GoFundMe all the details that they have asked for. I am confident that GoFundMe now has all the information needed to immediately lift the suspension they put on our campaign. I am hoping to hear from GoFundMe soon so that we can get the money to the truckers and keep our protest for freedom moving forward. There's no amendment that's absolute. There's no amendment that's absolute. There's no amendment that's absolute. As you heard Secretary Austin address just last Friday in his remarks uh, with the chairman here in the briefing room, we remain focused on the evolving situation in Europe and Russia's actions on the Ukrainian border and in Belarus. As the Secretary said, the United States stands shoulder to shoulder with our NATO allies. The current situation demands that we reinforce the deterrent and defensive posture on NATO's eastern flank. President Biden has been clear that the United States will respond to the growing threat to Europe's security and stability. Our commitment to NATO, Article 5, and collective defense remains ironclad. As part of this commitment, and to be prepared for a range of contingencies, the United States will soon move additional forces to Romania, Poland, and Germany. I want to be very clear about something. These are not permanent moves. They are moves designed to respond to the current security environment. Moreover, these forces are not going to fight in Ukraine. They are going to ensure the robust defense of our NATO allies. Now, let me lay this out for you in a series of three steps. First, I just want to counteract that. I actually pulled my daughter out of AM Culp because of the fifth grade teacher who lined those students up from whitest to darkest, made them turn around, and the white ones need to apologize to the black ones. Now, do not tell me that it did not happen, okay, in this district. You need to put an end to this. Kids do not see color, and you are segregating them, and you are separating them. This is not okay. Do something or get out of those damn chairs. When it comes to the honesty issue, this board has repeatedly denied an activity that has taken place at AM Culp Elementary. Just the last action meeting, we were actually attacked by Dr. G, who referred to Fox News about an event that happened. Fox News didn't tell me that the event happened at AM Culp Elementary. The activity I'm talking about is known as a privilege walk. It happened in the courtyard at AM Culp Elementary, not once, but four times. A teacher who had a professional courtesy, I won't say her name, lined the students up on the wall, asked them to step forward if their parents were married, step forward if their parents were uh, college educated, step forward if they own a cell phone or an iPhone, step forward if their skin color resembled one of a Band-Aid, step forward if they had an in-ground pool. Now this teacher um, carried out this event, and I know it happened because 
One father told me at the top of my driveway. Four parents told me over the phone. I sat in the driveway and a mother and father told me the story that happened to their daughter last year. And just Thursday, I sat in the living room and listened to the story verbatim, word for word, the same questions. But she also added at one point when she asked about the Band-Aid with a mini megaphone, the teacher told the student to get back on the wall because her parents were from India. That happened. There are no versions of the truth, Mrs. Stoll. You emphatically said that didn't happen five times. It did happen, but yet you still deny that it happened. We have filed the right to know for it. We did it in July. We're still waiting for the results on that because it keeps getting kicked down the can because you know you can run out the clock on the issue. My name is Naya Okami. I am the local werewolf girl. I go, Aah! Hello, TikTok. My name is Naya Okami, and on all levels except physical, I am a wolf. Bat, 